Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching Member Profile. I'm Cherry He. In today's program, we are delighted to invite Mr. Phil Tai as our guest. Mr. Tai is the co-founder and managing director of the Dragonback Capital Limited, which was established in 2007 in Hong Kong as a multi-strategy hedge fund. Mr. Tai has been the senior fixture of the Asia financial industry for about 20 years. Before joining Dragonback, he was the chief financial officer of PMA and a director of Credit Suisse First Boston. He is a member of the Global AMA Council, and he also sits on the AMA Hong Kong Executive Committee. He is an English charter accountant, and he also a board member of the HKSI. Hello, Phil. Thank you for joining us today. You have worked for the financial industry for about twenty years. How did you develop your career? Yes, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, yes, it's been a long career, and I suppose that reflects my age.、Uh, I actually started out in London,、uh, actually just north of London, where I trained as a chartered accountant,、uh, UK, an, an English chartered accountant,、uh, and I moved to London to a large audit firm called KPMG, and started working、uh, on auditing assignments within the banking and securities industry. Uh, and in 1995, I was given the opportunity to take a secondment from KPMG London to KPMG Hong Kong, where they、uh, they they needed some、uh, some more of some some expatriate talent, particularly those involved in banking and finance. So I, I jumped at the opportunity.、Um, one because I thought it was a very exciting opportunity to move away from London and and what was safe to me, and also my wife. Uh, is Cantonese.、Uh, once in Hong Kong, I had two、uh, very, very ex- interesting, exciting years at KPMG, working principally on banking and and securities clients, mainly securities clients, and then was given the opportunity to join Credit Suisse First Boston,、uh, where I worked for six years in a variety of always regional roles, where there was、uh, running parts of regional finance. Uh, and then I was a, the chief operating officer in, in the equity division for Non-Japan Asia, and finally、uh, moved into、uh, what was a relatively new product type for banking,、uh, which was prime brokerage. And prime brokers, if you may or may not know,、uh, the prime brokers departments in banks service hedge fund clients,、uh, and that was part, and that would have been in the early 2000s, where. Hong Kong was seen as one of the real burgeoning centres for hedge funds、uh, based in Asia.、Uh, I, in 2003, I was given the opportunity to move to what was then one of Asia's and particularly Hong Kong's largest hedge funds called PMA,、um, where I was asked basically to re to 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 build their infrastructure out in a consistent and institutional investor-friendly manner. Uh, and I had again three very good years there. We expanded.、Uh, when I left, we had two billion dollars in the management, and was、uh, was seen as one of the preeminent hedge fund institutional businesses in Asia.、Uh, but I thought it was time to leave. And soon after I left, I moved、uh, to with two partners to set up Dragonback, where you are now,、uh, and we set up a, our own hedge fund,、uh, which was an equity multi-strategy hedge fund. Uh, and had some some very interesting years. We launched it in early 2007,、uh, which, if most of your the, the listeners will remember, was was as part was towards the tail end of the bull market in in Asian and global markets. And by the end of 2007, we、uh, we'd certainly start to see the starts of the the global financial crisis. So it really was an interesting. It's a very challenging time.、Uh, it was sometimes a good time for a strategy because it was multi-strategy, but still very very. Very challenging from a business point of view,、um, but we're still here today. We we manage a number of strategies here,、um, and we seem to go from strength to strength, but always understanding that what we're trying to service is a global institutional investor base. Were there any setbacks and challenges? How did you overcome them? Yeah, I, I I'm not sure whether 
I've, I've experienced any setbacks. And I, I don't think that's necessarily lucky. I think that's just as you go through your career, you should move from strength to strength. Uh, I think setbacks, particularly if I was from, from a business perspective, things that were outside of my control, there were setbacks, there were challenges from the, uh, particularly setbacks from the global financial crisis as, as most people in the, in the global financial compu community experienced. Um, but in terms of challenges, there have been many challenges, but I think challenges for me uh, are something to be engaged and relished. I think challenges provide opportunity. They provide opportunity for growth, for learning. Um, and I see every challenge as a career opportunity. So I welcome challenge, and that was part of the reason, one of the big drivers for me moving to Hong Kong from London, which was a very, you know, very mature market in finance, and being an auditor in the finance community, it was, it was very a steady and, 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 and a well-known community. I moved to Asia and then moved into banking and was given the opportunity, the challenge, to build um, banking businesses throughout the region. Uh, and that was uh, a very satisfying time. And I've always taken on challenges. I look for challenges every day because that's the only time you really get to develop into and to really learn more. For young executive who wants to join the profession, what is your advice? Study hard. <laughs> but I think everyone will tell you that. I think in terms of profession, you mean the banking industry, the finance industry? The or the hedge fund industry? I think... You need, I think, for anybody who would say want to work f in one of my teams, you need to be open-minded and you need to be a team player. And you have to understand that the strength of the team is the most important part of an organization. So there's no individuals, that, uh, no successful individuals. You're sl you're even myself who run the business, it's not down to my success, it's down to the success of the team. And by being open-minded, it's, it's accepting that yeah, as part of a team, you have to do many things, and you can't just focus on on one thing every day. It doesn't help you, and it doesn't help it doesn't help me basically, because unless you challenge yourself and and do a variety of things, you won't learn, you won't grow. What do you think about the career prospects in the hedge fund industry? I think they're very strong. I think they're very strong, um, particularly in hedge fund in in, sorry, in Hong Kong. I think. There are many changes that the hedge fund industry are going through at the moment, and the hedge fund industry globally is one that, that continually changes. But, but what is happening now is you're seeing more and more interest, both from hedge fund managers and ultimately their investors, in Asia, and, and particularly North Asia. And, and Hong Kong has that, uh, that proximity to China and the rest of North Asia that makes it very attractive for, uh, for hedge funds either to start up here or to move some operations here. And as a result, it will bring, it brings many, it, it will continue to bring career opportunities um, for young, smart um, people who are willing to work very hard and willing to challenge themselves. What do you think the skills that are required to succeed in the hedge fund industry? Hard work. And I say that with all seriousness. I think it's Something that's said very often, particularly in hedge funds, it's hard work. It's, you know, it's, if it's a good hedge fund, it's, if it's a successful hedge fund, it still be, will be with a relatively small team. We do run, as an industry, we tend to run a very lean organization. We expect a lot of our staff at all levels, from partner down to, to associate and to, to analyst. Uh, I think one of the, the, the key things I look for when I'm hiring staff is what I call entrepreneurship. It's beyond that, um, that knowledge, that base knowledge, because everyone, I mean, not everyone, but I see so many people in Hong Kong and smart young people who are very well educated and very, very intellectual. But people that I, I want and people that Hedge Fund wants, generally we want someone who can take it that step further and think laterally, think problem solve, not just worry about day to day what they have to do or what they're told to do, but really understand the business and their role in the business and the success of the business and how they can make the business better. And that's what I call entrepreneurship. And those are the, it's those individuals that, uh, that I see as, as absolutely key to, to, to success. And it's those individuals that can start in one 
uh, take one opportunity in one of my businesses in, in a business, but then move somewhere else because I know they have the ability to expand themselves, develop, grow, and they could start in operations and end up in risk control, or they could start in operations and end up in fund management if they show that proper level of of entrepreneurship, that willingness to to work with the business and understand it. To be successful in the financial industry, what qualities are required? Oh, it's uh, you could ask so many people and get different answers. Uh, I'll go back to hard work. I think a lot of it's perseverance. You know, it's particularly if you're going into banking into larger or larger organizations, you need to persevere. It's it's a challenging environment for you individually, and and you need to keep at it despite. Getting, getting, maybe getting setbacks at times, or getting challenges that you may think are beyond you. I think very often, particularly at、uh, at the entrant level, you need to be very detailed oriented, because there are a lot of details you need to understand. I think you need to have very good interpersonal skills and good communication skills in general, both interpersonal, but both written and oral communication skills. Those would be the and and confidence. Absolute confidence in yourself;、uh, those would be the key attributes, I would think, generally to to succeed in the finance industry. You like extreme sports. What kind of sports or activities do you do, and why do you like it? Yeah, I'm not sure how extreme. I, I, people think it's extreme. I, I tend at the moment to focus on ultra marathoning. So that, and generally, what I do are multi-stage. Long distance running across deserts, in particular.、Uh, I do other adventure racing. I do 100-kilometer races in Hong Kong. But I really find doing multi-stage, multi-day, going out and running across very extreme environments with no one to rely on but myself, very challenging.、Uh, the reason I do it,、uh, I'm not sure. I do some of it to prove I still can. I think I do some of it to prove that. I can still challenge myself, and I think I also do it because, as I mentioned before, very when you're running a business and you're working in a business, the success of the business is really about you. But when you're really out there doing an ultra marathon in the desert, it's really up to me. It's only me, and it's the one time that I can, I can spend, or the one thing I can do, that I really have to rely on myself, and and my abilities, and that's probably why I do it. How did you benefit from those activities personally?、Uh, they're very extreme, and I think, and, and they take a while. They're generally a week long.、Uh, they're very extreme environments, and I think, as I'm doing them, and at the end of them, I'm forced to reevaluate myself. Where, what, yeah, you know, what was my strengths? What were my weaknesses?、Um, and very often, and most often, it's very, it's a very positive reevaluation because I understand actually I can do more than I really thought. But sometimes you also realise that things you you can't do, you can't do everything on your own, and you have to realise what that is, and then reevaluate what you're going to do the next time. But、uh, that's that's really what I'm getting out of it. You went to South Pole and Gobi Desert. Did you get inspired in any way? Did you have any special thoughts or feelings? I actually missed Gobi. I actually didn't go to the South Pole. I went to Antarctica. Uh, and didn't go anywhere near as extreme. I, what happened last year was there is a, a series of races run called the the Four Deserts, and those Four Deserts are the the hottest, driest, windiest, and coldest or something deserts in the world.、And、they're Atacama in Chile, the Sahara in Egypt, the Gobi in China, and the last one is they call it the last desert is Antarctica,、uh, which believe it or not is a desert because there's so little rainfall.、Uh, I took on a, an extreme challenge、uh, last year to do all four in a year, which prior to last year only two people had ever done. Most people do one a year or something like that, and that was the challenge I set myself.、Um, Antarctica was the last one, and that's why I went. And why did I really do that one?、Uh, I thought it was an enormous opportunity that very few people get to be able to actually run in Antarctica. It's such a A difficult remote place to get to. It's such a difficult place to to run in and to do anything in,、um, and it's actually a difficult place to get access to nowadays. So it was <clears throat> the opportunity I had to go down and challenge myself in sense a unique environment was、uh, I couldn't resist that. But it was also the fourth leg of what was the what they call the Four Desert Grand Slam.
I, I do I, I I'm not sure inspire I get inspired going to places like Chile just three days after that massive earthquake they had and seeing how resilient the people were. I get inspired in seeing villages in, in Sahara in the desert and seeing how they cope and similarly villages in, uh, in, up around Urumqi in China. And you know, they're all so unique, so unique, such unique and, and very different and very harsh environments. And you get inspired by looking at the people, meeting the people who are always very welcoming and understanding and, and seeing how they, how they live and, and how, how they see they succeed in, in what are, I think, to most of us, the most challenging of environments that are, are so different to what we have to do every day and, and what we see every day in Hong Kong. Uh, I do also get inspired by my fellow competitors, many of our friends now, because to go and do these, you know, everyone has a different tale when they're doing these and why they're doing these and, and how they're coping and there's always a lot of injuries and, and whatever. And you get inspi inspired by what, what you see from, from these people and the tales they have to tell. Are you a person who always wants to excel and challenge yourself? I think I always want to challenge myself, both professionally and, and personally, absolutely. And I think that's important. I think you should never sit and rest on your experiences. There's, there's always something. Uh, there's always something more you can do. And yeah, I, I would definitely say I'm, I'm one that always wants to challenge myself. I'm always looking for something. So we'll see when we stop racing across deserts. What my, I already have an idea, an idea or two, and we'll see. But there, there'll certainly be a, a completely new challenge for me. Do you always set new goals for yourself? Could you please share with us your skills and experience in goal setting and meeting those goals? Yeah, I think I think I, I certainly set goals in business. And I set goals and I set goals personally in business. Yeah, the, the obvious things. It, it's how you grow the business and how you can achieve that and how you can measure that. Um, whether it's clients, whether it's revenue, whether it's profitability, whether it's staffing. There's many ways. I think if I was to give a good example, it's. It was doing that challenge last year that you know, there was obviously one what I would call super goal that was to finish all four deserts, but you can't really react to that. I mean that's too big a goal, and it is actually because only two people in the world have ever done it. You have to sit back and think, well, you know what? It's probably unlikely I'll succeed, right? That, that, but nonetheless, it's important to set that goal. But what you do then is break that down. You have to break that down into smaller goals. Basically there's goals along the way and there's measuring points you have to and, and assessment points all the way along and you do that so you start and say well I need to train hard, I need to plan, how am I going to get through the first race in Chile? Not only how am I going to prepare myself, how to get the right gear, I have to understand everything about nutrition and what I'm going to need in that environment, how am I going to get there? That got challenged because three days before I left or four days before I left there was a massive earthquake. But how do I do that? How do I get to the starting line? Once you get to the starting line, you think, well, there's seven days ahead of me. Right, so I need to get through the first day. And I need to get the first day in good enough shape so when I wake up the next day, I'm going to want to run another marathon. How do you get through the first day? Well, you go 10 kilometers at a time. That's a new goal. So it's always a matter of breaking down goals. And as you start with a big goal and you break it down into smaller goals that you can measure and you can spend time evaluating once you achieve that, how do you get to the next goal? And that's what you need to do. It's incredibly important. You have to have a goal in everything you do in life. But don't take that as the ultimate. Very often you have to reassess along the way what your ultimate goal is or maybe how you're going to get there. Um, but you need to have goals. What's your life philosophy? Do you have any personal motto? Uh, I'm not sure what a life philosophy is. I think, I don't, and I don't, I don't have a motto. What's my philosophy? I, I apply to everybody I know, and it's, that includes people that, that work for me, work with me, and but friends, um, fellow competitors, colleagues, whatever. I would never criticize someone for failure or for not, sorry, not failure, for not succeeding. But I would criticize them if they didn't give 100% trying. 
that's the difference. Um, I also have a, I have a motto, I guess, and people get tired of it, but I also think it's very important to learn at least one thing a day because you should never stop. You should go to the end of the day and think, you know what, I learned that today. Because it doesn't matter how experienced you are or how long you've been around, there's far more things to learn than you're ever going to know. So you have to come out every day and think, that was a good day because I learned that. Phil, thank you for sharing your experience with us today. Do you have anything else to share with our members or young people who want to join the profession? I would say particularly the young members. It's, you know, the, the finance industry, the security industry, particularly in Hong Kong, is a, is a vibrant, it's a very strong industry, whether you measure it locally or by global standards. Uh, there's opportunities for everybody, as long as you're willing to work hard um, and apply yourself. And in that sense, you should go for it if you have that mentality. You know, we as an industry welcome them. We'll welcome people like that. Thank you for joining us today. See you next time.